spread out, spread out more. Okay, let's go. Okay, move, move. Okay, be careful, be careful. I feel weird. I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel tingly. I feel tingly. We all feel tingly. We all, we all got to know. We got to know. We got to know. Is it a UFO, John? I don't know. I don't know. What is the UFO? What is, is it? I don't know. It, it's not real. It's lights. It's not an object. It does not appear to be a solid, total object. It just appears like it could be an object because it, it gives the, it gives the impression of an object, but it's mostly lights. It's all lights. It seems like lights to me. A shape it's made of light. Yes, a shape made of lights. It's getting smaller. It's small. Look how small it got. Look how small it is. I don't believe it. Look how small it is. It's just there, though. It, it, it's like it's calling to us to come to it. it we've got to go to it. It's telling us to come to it. We can feel it. Yes, can you feel it? Yes, I can feel it. We've got to get to it. We've got to get to it. We've got to know what it wants. It wants us. It wants us. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Spread out. We're getting into some more woods again. How could it move? How could it move through the woods? How could it move through the woods like that? There is no way. There is no way. Nothing can move through the woods like that. There is absolutely no way. There's no trees being knocked out. There's no trees being knocked down, but it's in the woods. Look at this. It's in the woods. It's moving up and down. Look at this. Sergeant Pennison. Should we keep going? Yes, we should. I, I agree. I agree. Are you okay over there? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. But this is weird. I know it's weird. I've never seen anything like this. Look around. Can you see any other crafts? Can you see anything else? Can you see somebody that might be out here doing this to us? Can you see anybody? It's No, it's quiet. It's all quiet now. There's nothing there but this thing. It's pulsating. There's red lights. There's blue lights. There's orange lights. It's there. It's small, though. It's real small. It's small. Keep going. Keep going. We can hear humming now. We can hear humming now. The ground's shaking. The ground's shaking. This is weird. This is weird. Why didn't we bring our guns? Why didn't we bring our guns? Could it be trying to us? I feel I feel like I'm being pulled. Something's pulling me. Oh, God. Sergeant Patterson, what's going on? I don't know. It's pulling it towards us. It's pulling it towards us. Oh, look. It just changed again. It's small. It's small. It's small. It's small. Now it's moving back. Now it's moving back. Now it's moving back. Now it's moving back. Look. Look. It just... Look. Look how fast it moved back. Look. It, it's... It's a quarter mile back now. It's a quarter mile back now. Let's start running. We can't let it get away from us. We've got to know where it is. Okay. Well, it's gone. Okay. Security control. Return to base. Return to base. Return to base. ETA back. I don't know. 30 minutes. Hour. Unknown. Unknown. Okay. Keeping radio contact. Okay. And we just start walking back. And I'm talking to him. I'm talking. Sergeant Tennyson and I and Bananacek or Bananacek. Bananacek. We're walking. We're walking. And we're walking back. Okay, what was it? I don't know. John, what do you think it is? I don't know. Do I look scared? You look pale. I don't know what I saw, John. I think it was a UFO. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to believe what I saw. He goes, you know, John, it seemed like we were there and all of a sudden we're here. Why couldn't we get radio contact with them? We should have been able to. We were, we were, we were, we were, there was repeater stations, there was towers, but we lost contact with them. I don't know. Well, well, what are we going to do? I don't know. Let's just see what happens when we get back. So we're walking, and it's cold, and we're walking, and we come across a creek that we don't even remember crossing. Do you remember this, John? No, I don't remember this. Do you remember that, John? No, I don't remember that. Well, how did we get there? I don't know. Could we, could we, could we have been moved by it? Could, could something have picked us off the ground? I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, let's get back. Okay, now now the radio transmissions are getting strong now. Real strong. Okay, we're talking real clearly with them. And they're saying, what's your ETA? We don't know. We don't know. The British police are there. The um, shift commander's there. The, the flight chief of security flight chief's there. Our flight chief's there. There's other law enforcement patrols there. Um, everybody was concerned. They go, they go, we've lost contact with you for 45 minutes, 50 minutes. We didn't know where you were. We saw, the WSA tower saw all kinds of lights in the air. They thought they saw something being beamed up in the air, but they weren't sure. They thought, we lost you, John. We thought, we thought we lost you guys. Well, what happened? We don't know. I had a feeling of disbelief. I didn't know what happened. I wanted to make sure in my mind that there had to be physical proof. 
out there where the site was to make me believe what I saw. So we went. I went out there with the rest of them. And when we got there, there was a Sergeant Gullius, a Captain Verano, and some other guys out there that I don't know who they were. And we were asked to show what happened. And we, we went out kind of in the area where we first found this thing. And God darn it, there were tripods. There were three evenly spaced impressions in the ground. Right where we saw this light. And I'm like, holy Jesus. And we're all looking at each other and we're going, Maybe we were not weirdo. Maybe something really did happen out there. So then we went and there were tree limbs now. There was fresh tree limbs now. And there was some damage to the trees. And I by then I'm like going, oh my goodness. Well, I'm going to myself. And started testing. Something happened. Oh God, I wish we could have recorded this. I wish I wish we would have had more than just what we were there. I do too, John. We just experienced something probably that a lot of people never have and never will. We just experienced something that a lot of people never have and never will. And after that, John Burroughs and Jim Penniston returned to their Sea Flight Shift Commander. Lieutenant Fred Baran, who asked them to describe what happened. And Sergeant Penniston called the lighted object in the forest, quote, a craft of unknown origin, close quote. After debriefing, John Burroughs returned to his rented room in Ipswich to get some sleep during the day of December 26th. John woke up in the early morning of December 27th feeling like something had returned. Burroughs was told that D-Flight Shift Commander, Bonnie Tamplin, was driving in her Jeep when a blue light stopped the vehicle and entered the window, and that when the blue light moved inside of her Jeep and back out, the blue light scared Lieutenant Tamplin so much that she cried on her communications over the radio and she was relieved of her duty. So even though John Burroughs in sea flight was off duty, he decided to return to Rendlesham Forest. He met Doc Rhodes at the D-Flight Guard Mount for the midnight shift into December 28th and got a ride to join Deputy Base Commander Charles Halt, who had organized a team of men and equipment to investigate the Rendlesham lights. Now finally, this is the night after midnight, December 28th, when there were at least 30-some men out in the forest. Colonel Halt is there. There are light alls, Geiger counter. There are, there's a lot of equipment and trucks. And now we're picking back up with one more short segment from the 1988 hypnosis session, which is the first time that John Burroughs at least in his subconscious mind, remembered some details about what happened. Colonel Hall, go, I go to Colonel Hall, it's back again, I can't believe it. Uh, he, he acted like he wasn't surprised. He was real calm. But the other people were scared. They were, looked weird. They looked very surprised and very, very upset. Colonel Halt and I were standing there, and Arnold, Arnold and and I were standing there, and he was good friends with Colonel Halt. Well, what happened, Colonel? Weird thing. Um, he goes, oh, he goes, weird things, Chris. He goes, um, we had things over on top of. They were making contact with their mind. And I 
I looked at him, what are you talking about? It's a little blue light. And I go, I didn't see a little blue light tonight before like that. He goes, well, they're out there. And he goes, the craft was still hovering out there. He goes, they're coming from that craft. They've been out there for hours. And I go, well, I want to get closer. And he says, okay. He goes, you can come with me, but Chris, I want you, Tommy, to stay here. Hit the light off at the truck. And he goes, John, I want you to go out there because I think you can bring this closer. What do you mean? Who told you that? Colonel Hall. I think you can bring this ship and these things closer. They want you to do it. And I'm like, who wants you to do it? Colonel Hall? Colonel Hall said they did. That's all he said was that. Does he appear to uh, have some knowledge or some understanding that you don't understand? I didn't understand what was going on. Okay. I was... He seemed to know something that you did. He seemed to be a very at peace of mind and very calm. And like he, something, he goes, this is the most bizarre, weirdest experience. He, people will never believe it. Do you know why they thought you could bring it closer? No, I didn't understand. And that was something that I never understood either. They all, they wanted me there and they wanted me there in stages. Like, you could stay in this area for a while. They weren't surprised that I was there either. They were not surprised. The people that saw me come out there were surprised, but Colonel Halt was not surprised. And they kept me in stages. They kept me waiting, like, wait him here, wait him there, and now it's okay. What happened then? Well, then he put his arm around me and he said, let's go. And then there was some... All of a sudden there was this short, fat buck sergeant, and he was Mexican. And he was there... He appeared. He appeared coming up, like coming towards me. Like he wasn't with the main group. He was like coming up towards me. And he says, let's go. And uh, three of us walked towards the craft. And Colonel Hall goes, I've got all this on tape recording. And he shows me the tape recording. And he has a radio with him too, his radio. And he goes, and I'm recording all this through the wing command post. He goes, or I'm going to keep all this stuff because it's going to be worth something. And he goes, let's go. So we started walking. And the light was there, and it was in the distance. And we walked, we walked some, a little bit farther. And then, there it was. Three blue lights. He goes, there they are. He goes, yeah, there they are. And he goes, that's what we had before. And he goes, John, he goes, you're never going to believe this. But there a group of us, they made contact with us. They were on top of us. It was like they spoke to us. I go, they, what's they? And they, he goes, these lights. I go, you mean you saw something? He goes, these lights. He goes, there were lights there, and, and, and they were speaking to us. They were over us. They were flying in the sky. They were hovering over us. They were doing all kinds of things. Uh, now, John, hold it back there where you can see those blue lights. Now, I want you to look at one of those lights and ask the question that comes to your mind. And that light... Talk back to you. Tell me what it says. Come to me. Okay, now. What'd you do? They started moving, and we all froze. And they were up and down. You mean the light? Yeah. Okay, they split now. up. They split up. Okay, now ask them what they represent. That's that light. What, what, what it's representing? The craft. Okay. Now, is there any life form in or with that craft? That was a life form. The craft, the light, is the life form. The blue lights are the ones that he was identifying as being telepathic, putting information into their minds, and the short uh, fat Mexican is Adrian Bastinza, who was a sergeant and played a very interesting role on that particular night. This is the night of the 28th, this audio. Now, what I'm going to do is go back to after midnight, the 26th. You have now 
had an experience.